welcome to our author talk with Dr. Steve Belko. Uh, Steve is the author of Contesting the Constitution, Congress Debates the Missouri Crisis from 1819 to 1821. So this year we are celebrating 200 years of Missouri as a state. And Steve, um, there's a lot of that went into Missouri becoming a state 200 years ago um, with Congress debating this and what was really a crisis. So. Uh, could you just talk us through some of what happens um, in your book? Yeah, um, and I will say too, it's edited volume. Uh, it was an idea of mine to do anyway. I had read uh, my PhDs in this area, and so I'd read the congressional debates, and then I even indexed the congressional debates. I mean, if it's an index, I actually have it, and I'll give it to you. And so with this all going on, and uh, Missouri Humanities has a traveling exhibit. It's pretty extensive. In fact, you can go see it at the Springfield Green County Yes, I library. stopped by last week. Excellent. It's yeah. great. I definitely recommend it. And so we quit with eight, uh, 1821. I'm on the Bicentennial Commission for the governor, but I'll let everybody take the next 200 years. I got the first three that don't count, apparently. Mm -hmm. um, so that kind of goes in tandem. But uh, my, period, my period's constitutional history, and I thought, we, get, we can't ignore this. We've got to do something. So... I wrote three cha or two chapters and the introduction, and I got three of my close colleagues to say, hey, guys, submit a chapter. Uh, but basically, uh, the whole Missouri crisis uh, was a constitutional question. It was a constitutional crisis. And we think, well, what about slavery? Well, it, that was part of that constitutional crisis. But the whole debate was, does Congress have the power to place conditions on a territory before it becomes a state? And they stipulate to it, unless you do this, this, or that, you don't get a star on the flag. And that's what it was about. And that did have to do with slavery, the Talmadge Amendment, to gradually eliminate slavery in Missouri with the hope that slavery will never go west of the Mississippi River. Uh, and um, not, I mean, I'd say the last time they really cold through a constitution like this was the ratification debates, 1787 to 1788. Next time they'll do it, it's the 1850s. And that just like this, they never resolve the issues. So we go to war in right. 1860s. They just didn't go to war at the time. Uh, it was bitter, but um, they never resolved any of those constitutional debates. And you could have a congressman for slavery restriction, restriction in Missouri. Unbelievable argument. It's like, wow, yeah. And then you would read somebody counter him. Whoa, that's just as good. Um, so that's the, no way really had a dumb debate. Right. Reading the book, I just was astounded how it could just go round and round and round. There's the same, you know, the same wording sometimes. They'll yes. use the same words to argue completely opposite points. Of yes, view. It, it, it's, it's maddening, but, you know, they're great attorneys and politicians. But they did have the conviction. They did mean it. Right. Uh, but the, those issues were never resolved because it was a compromise. Right. Uh, they all just had to kind of, you know, take their ball and go home and Missouri comes into the union and causes another crisis with our constitution, which led to another constitutional debate in Congress. So, Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so could you talk about some of the um, individual clauses and wordings that oh, might've been? Um, yeah, used? I don't want to get too technical. Don't worry. Even I don't want to do that in my degrees in this right, field, but right. uh, the, the main, they cold through everything. Right. Uh, there are sections of the constitution. I thought who would ever have brought that up? Uh, but the main debate is article four. And definitely four sections and clauses of that. One, the, uh, the power of Congress to admit new states. And that's actually what it says. Congress shall may admit new states, yada, yada, yada. And they'll argue, what, what the heck does may mean? We may or we may not. Right. Um, things of that nature. It doesn't say we can't put some restrictions on it. And some would you know, say, well, maybe we can't. Uh, the territorial clause is that, that that's a no-brainer. Congress governs the territories. So you would think, well, if, they're, if it's a territory, they can do whatever they want. The needful rules and regulations. We don't want slavery. Well, the argument was, is, well, slavery is a what we call a municipal institution. It can't be touched by Congress. Right. So the big debate is, 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 is slavery recognized in the Constitution? Is it protected by the Constitution? Some will say, heck yes. Others will say, heck no. And they all got their proof of that. So if that's a, if that's the case, Congress can't touch slavery in a territory. Right. Uh, and of course, the guarantee clause that uh, we're supposed to guarantee every state a Republican form of government. Well, what's Republican mean? Right. Um, and for a lot of those who wanted slavery gone, a Republican form does not have slavery. For those who own slaves, well, I hate to tell you this, but every republic since the dawn of man was based on slavery. Right. Um, so th these arguments are just, you know, th there's no resolution to them. Um, and then finally, the privileges and immunities clause. Um, 
And that really comes in the second crisis, because there's really two compromises. Mm -hmm. And in Missouri's constitution, we had a clause that empowered the General Assembly to pass laws, quote, to prevent uh, free mulattoes and um, free blacks and mulattoes from coming into this state and selling on any pretext whatsoever. Mm-hmm. Well, they're free. Yeah. So, I mean, if you're, you're in free in Massachusetts, Massachusetts, you should be free. And so that was the big debate. And uh, again, never resolved. And I will say that there were some states that uh, actually had that uh, very similar uh, black codes. Right. So Missouri went, we're not doing anything different than, you know, some of you folks. Sure. Uh, and again, no resolution. And then, of course, the other big three would be the three-fifths clause that really embittered New Englanders because they're losing political power because you count slaves. And that they'll complain that the whole Virginia dynasty, the South, Virginia, you know, claims the White House because the three-fifths clause waits them in the right. Electoral College. And so one more state that's slave, well, that's more political power for, you know, against the, you know, Old Federalists. Um, right. in, they in were Northeast. losing election after election. They're losing political power, so, and that, that, yeah. you know, they wanted that. If, if, you, if there are no more slave states, the Free Fifth Clause really doesn't mean anything. Right. And the Civil War resolved that one. And then uh, the Migration and Importation Clause is one of the most torn apart. And just read the chapter. I couldn't even go over it. I had a PowerPoint slide in one presentation. I was a little bit phrase by phrase, word by word. They're going over what's the word admit mean? What does migration mean? Right. Uh, and they're arguing from all kinds of you know situations, and so civil war resolves that. Uh, and then finally, the treaty making powers because of the treaty with France had Article Three in there, pretty much said you have to be admitted to the Union as soon as possible. And there's all these clauses. What's that mean? If you're a territory, you're not kind of in the Union. No, it got to be a state. Um, they never resolved that. So those are the big constitutional crises they had. But I mean. They comb through a lot of other yes, commerce clause for years, right? Two years or something like yeah, that. Yeah, really started in 1819 and um, never, like I said, resolved. Mm-hmm. Um, just a compromise, is it? Right. So. Well, um, it's an interesting book. Um, I couldn't believe all of the information in there, but <laughs> I was wondering how, how do you go about writing something like this? Um, how do you research it? Um, from what I understand, you're looking at. Um, Reporters. Um, yeah, and- so I, I, well, there is a little caveat to that. Um, we we took the con- uh, the co- congressional debates as we would look at the ratification debates. There were actually ratification conventions, you know, to ratify the the, the, the Constitution, and they're printed, and you can go through that and get the anti federals versus the federal arguments in various sections of the Constitution. So we did that in the very same manner, looking at Congress's a ratification debate. Um, so. There's some pitfalls. So we didn't look at any manuscript, private collections, anything like that. Every once in a while through another state legislature, if they had something. We also took it back to the Constitutional Convention. Because some of this, what did they say back then? Right. And now, what do they say now? And so um, there are some pitfalls with that is because of just poor recording. Uh, and I do write about that in the introduction. Uh, sometimes those who are, are recording the speeches can't hear. And it'll just say, due to the din of conversations in the galley, I could only get this much. Uh, the other problem was, is they delivered these great speeches and then later, if they didn't get them, the congressman would rewrite it and and go and hand it to, uh, like Niles or, you know, so So who knows what they omitted or added. Well, for example, the, the great one, uh, the great instance of this is Henry Clay, you know, Mm -hmm. the great compromiser. He is central to all of this. We only know what he said by what others mentioned. Right. Uh, and so, and then there's sometimes that uh, so and so spoke for three hours at length. Yeah. For or against the you know the reporters might have been falling asleep at that exactly. point. Exactly. <laughs> and the good news though about that is is that uh, you know after going through and reading them and indexing them, I don't know, they, they wouldn't have said much any different. There was really it was a black and white course. You know, mm-hmm. they never wandered from these two general arguments, and so. Um, yeah, and that's kind of how we took it as the second ratification debates. Mm-hmm. Um, and so the, the unique thing about that is, and most people don't know this, there are actually two people in Congress who were at the Philadelphia Convention in 1787 and stayed for the whole thing. And uh, the fun part of this is one's a Southerner, one's a Northerner. So that didn't solve anything. They contradicted each other in the memories of the Philadelphia Convention. So. Uh, but then, you know, former presidents, Madison stepped in. He was at the convention. And mm-hmm. John Jay uh, was Publius, a, you know, a writer for one of the Federalist Papers. And so they chimed in and contradicted each other. 
Um, nobody can win. It, it's just, uh, you know, even the Monroe administration, you think of Congress, but, you know, Monroe's going to have to either sign or veto a bill. Right. And so he had these debates among uh, his cabinets. And it's, it's even some of the cabinet members did not argue what you thought they might at the time. Mm-hmm. Um, so this is a major crisis. And obviously it's hitting state legislatures as well. So. Right. And it was not resolved right then, um, just uh, 40 years later. And pretty much, yeah. yeah. And yeah. so the, the compromises didn't work in 1860, 61, and then we see what happened. Of course, um, I know you get to interview General Grant at some time, so I can yes. put this out that I will say that that generation who brought us into the Civil War were nowhere near the quality and character of the generation prior to them, the two generations prior to them. That may say a lot on that as well. So um, definitely, yeah. All right. Well, uh, again, the book is contesting the Constitution. If you want to know more about uh, how Missouri became a state two hundred years ago, this is a great place to start. Uh, thanks so much, uh, Dr. Belko, yeah. for being here with us. Appreciate uh, it. Thank you.